I know that you filmed Sidney Poitier in the heat of the night and I know that you were um, the person that suggested to use a particular lighting around people of color with tone and everything. Did you, have you had any previous experience with that or is that something you just kind of intuitively understood? Well, and you're how, laughing. <laughs> how one lights a particular person of color uh, is, um, is hardly of, of any consequence vis-a-vis -vis the picture in the heat of the night. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyone who listens to my interview has to know that the important thing about it in heat of the night was that it was in a time of the civil rights movement. All the people that made the film wanted to make a statement, an artful statement, against racism. Okay. And Sidney Poitier and Harry Belafonte and many of black people that I worked with uh, when uh, were active in, in the streets and in demonstrating at that time. Okay, and then... And, and, and if you want to talk of just visually on photography, um, black, <clears throat> black skins, for example, have all, all kinds of Accused. reflective qualities and so forth. Uh, some, uh, some photographers use what they call liners a lot. Uh, but, um, and for those of us that are neophytes, what does that mean? You said some uh, photographers use liners. A liner liners is a light that comes from behind and, um, and hits the side of the face like this, so it gives a, a highlight there. But that's a very uh, artificial, mechanical way of thinking about lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at lighting by your eye, and, and if you use a light meter, fine. But uh, it's not, it's, of all the things that relate to photographer and filmmaking, uh, how you film a black person it takes a, a back seat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're always just talking about in terms of color because I know personally when I modeled, I was a model for a long time, that they used to have to bring in certain kind of lighting just to pick up all the yellow or whatever was in my skin, which is what prompted me to ask the question because I knew that he was, had very dark skin and I know a lot of people are not aware that you do need a little brighter light or something to bring out those tones. That's why I was asking you that. Now, how has making documentaries, movies, filming uh, with real life issues, not books people read and they form opinions, but dealing out there on the streets with real life issues. How has that changed you as a person? Or do you feel that it's changed you as a person? Has it deepened you as a person? You know, how has it changed you as an individual person? Well, most of the movies I've made in my life, I'm fortunate enough, helped express what I feel. My real life person has a general attitude toward life, uh, which is, um, which I can't describe. It, it's pretty much uh, what my mother brought me up mm -hmm. to, to be, to, to try to be a, a good person, to try to be respectful, to try to, uh, um, To, to be a, to try to earn a star on the refrigerator yeah. and getting a star on the refrigerator is um, is doing good and not just good for your own personal aggrandizement but doing good just as a person with your friends and your fellow workers and even some people that you don't even see or know. So just trying to be a human and, and ex exercise humanity towards every person yes. basically and, is what you And because we are picture maker, storytellers, we have an obligation to use this artistic, filmic, picture making ability uh, to say something, uh, say something that uh, that's, needs to be said. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the other question is that in your opinion, do politics, arts and religion overlap and do they govern our behavior and influence our decisions. Do politics, art, and religion overlap? Like, for instance, President Obama was on the Jay Leno show. The, so, the, 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 what do you think about that? The divisions and names of politics, art, and all these things. These are arbitrary 
confining things. Uh, all of them are, are certain mythologies which are built, which are built on, uh, on a, a cultural look of, of societal priorities. If you begin with the societal priorities, which some religions agree with, most of those religions, some, some theoretical politicians agree with, is that we're all here on this planet we all want fundamentally the same things, right. and we have the power together to make things better if we have that view of what we're here on this planet for. Right. And so, um, just to say something political immediately to make to, to diminish it, and then sometimes reducing it, whether it's Republican or Democrat, or to say religion, because all the religions and what we hear about them are perverted by myths. Right. That uh, fit that fit in certain cultural patterns. Right. Now I, I know that you would like a shorter and more. Um, no, I wanted you to get into detail. Things, no. But um, that's what I wanted to hear. Number one, you have artists like Lady Gaga. All of a sudden, art is being mixed into music more than it ever has been before. Uh, you have huge artists like Gaga, Beyonce, in their attempt to. Uh, do a fuller and more bigger production, draw, we'll get more money for your bang. They are actually including art and religions. Case in point, when Madonna made her Jesus something about video and she had the, a black man on the cross, she got a lot of flack from the press because of that. So that's why I asked that question. Did you think they overlap? Because I want to hear your opinion. I know a lot of people what they think, but I wanted to hear somebody that's an expert at filming and filming political um, uh, movies as well as just general movies and uh, you know just uh, common every other, every or, ordinary day movies so that's why I asked that question and then now I know that um, you have done a lot of things and I know that you are still really really busy and we appreciate your time so much today it means the world to me to interview you um, what are your goals for 2014 and 2015, since I know they usually run a year for movies and those kind of things to come out. Um, Are you working on documentaries now? Are you working on another film? You know, tell me. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm working on a documentary now. Uh, basically, um, the general subject is based on a book called War is a Lie, uh, because we see now that um, all around us that we are, uh, the general population is kept in, in fear of the other. Uh, I went to the Laker games last night, and the uh, night before last. How was that? And uh, to go to the Laker game, um, you have to go through, uh, you have to go through uh, x-ray, make just take stuff out of your pocket, uh, to take a, go on a flight, uh, you have to have uh, somebody, since I have a pacemaker, somebody feel your body and, and ask where you're, do you have any sensitive parts? Mm -hmm. And actually I have to say, my sensitive part is this, is what you're doing is not saving me from any crazy person that might hurt that plane. What you're doing is all around me, you're maintaining an era of fear, fearing something else, and that you, the guy who's employed, who says security, that you are protecting me. And uh, in doing that, I give up uh, all my freedom. And, um, and that's what's in the air now. And that's what we have to do as, as, as artists, as, as communicators with cameras and things, is to say, that's bull. That's bull. The real enemy is a system that doesn't have jobs for people, that doesn't have health care, does not have proper education, and that puts profit and money ahead ahead of human value. Absolutely. That's the real enemy. Absolutely. Yeah. And I went through the same thing going go, just going home into Texas and you think I was some I thought it was some official or something, the way they pull me over and you take your shoes and they did everything but strip search me actually. So mm -hmm. it's <laughs> you know, they they say that certain men over, over, I think it's 65 or something, that you don't have to take your shoes off. 
Really? Why? I, they made me I, take I, my shoes yeah, off, and I'm a woman. I, that's a good question. So, would you mad? Would you write a little scene of of how these guys who sat down and say, "What do you think is a proper age for some guy?" You think someone that's 66? They're not 66. They're not likely to put uh, a bob in their shoe. Or, you know, I mean, it's such so primitive. It's so fucking primitive. Yeah. But what, what do you think that we, we should do in, in this case? And I know I, my feelings are just as strong as yours are, so we don't want to get my feelings out. But uh, what do you think would be a better kind of system to, to, to filter out the people that do cause problems, like the people that just go out random shooting groups of kids for no reason? Or Look, look at first place, there have always been shooting. nutty people, okay? okay. Nowadays, when, when weapons and guns are proliferating, naturally uh, there's going to be, and also there's the economy and all the things that society is supposed to give